The whole system is gearing up and gathering together to destroy all humanity in humans so that they can destroy all of God's creation. Father, to destroy all your intentions and all your plans that you've had when you created the Garden of Eden. As the Antichrist spirit that rules them, dictate to them, and have dictated since his first rebellion in heaven. But Father, this is impacting us here in 2022. The famines that's coming, no buying or selling, the persecution, because if we don't join in on this new world system, Father, we will face all these persecutions and all these troubles and all these dark times. And we have to ask ourselves, and I'm asking myself, is it worth it? Is it really going to be worthwhile being the only one not having the genetic shot, the QR codes, the digital currency, radio frequency microchip, the biometrical in integration into the smart system, the meta world goggles, the technology, the smart devices in our house? And the smart technology inside our bodies. Is it really going to be worth it being the only one on the fringes of society. Expelled and ridiculed for still believing you are going to come back someday. Is it really worth it to lose everything. To save my God given spirit. While the rest of them follow the increasingly dictatorial mandates and remain approved and accepted. I ask myself, is it really going to be worth it? How, how will we make it? And you always answer, Father. Maybe it takes time. Because testing and purification of true faith does take time. But you do answer. How long did Joseph have to wonder if all of this is really worth it? Genesis 37 to 40. And after all that... After everything that Joseph has gone through, Jacob blessed him through his two boys, Ephraim and Manasseh, with a double portion. And that is prophetic for returning Ephraim, for the returning lost sheep of the house of Ephraim, Deuteronomy 4, verse 26 to 30. God will bring you again into the promised land. Jacob blessed Joseph. Genesis 48, verse 21. And how amazingly was that fulfilled when we read in the book of Joshua, chapter 16, verse 4. After so many years of slavery and then the, wilder, uh, the, the wandering father in the wilderness and your testing of our faith in the desert. I know all these prophecies, Father. I do believe them. I am going to love you until I die or until I'm killed. But your prophecies through Joseph, through his life, through Daniel and Revelation, it's, it's all so spiritual. What about me in 2022, going into this one false God system right now? And I asked you to, to show me, give me an answer. And you opened my Bible at Joshua 16. And I started reading. The lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho. Unto the water of Jericho, unto the east, to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel, and going out from Bethel to Luz, and passing along the borders of Arki to Ataroth, goes down westwards to the coast of Yafleti, unto the coast of Beth Heron, to Gezer, and the goings out thereof are up to the sea. So the children of Joseph. Manasseh and Ephraim took their inheritance. And the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was this. Even the border of their inheritance on the east side was Ataroth Adar, unto Beth Heron. And the border went out towards the sea to Mikmeta on the northern side. And the border went out eastwards unto Ta'anata Shalow. Ta'anath, Shiloh, and passed by it unto the east, to Yanoha. And it went down from Yanoha to Ataroth, and to Naarath, 
and came to Jericho and went out at Jordan. The border went out from Tapua westward unto the river Kana. And the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families. Father, and I'm wondering why am I reading this? And as you have been teaching all of us at two trees in the garden, we have to dig, take a spade and a shovel and dig into the mystery, into the hidden message you have for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. So I started finding the meanings of all these regions and all these towns and areas in the Hebrew. And now I'm going to read for you what Father showed me, what these borders are, what the prophecy is for us who has come out of Egypt, learned about the sun god religion, but followed Moses through the wilderness, followed Joshua into the promised land, understanding that everything in Egypt and Babylon and in the wilderness journey is there for a reason. Verse 2, and going out from the house of God through to the almond tree, and that reminds me of the almond blossom of Aaron's staff, where the rulers within the camp of Israel tried to overpower Moses and Aaron. From the house of Al to the almond tree, passing long borders all the way to crowns. Going westwards, verse 3, to escape <laughs> and be delivered. <laughs> wow, unto the house of hollowness where we have a part in. This is verse 3. Going down westward to the coast of Yaflati and to the coast of Beth Heron, the nether, and to Gezer, and the going out there of is, is at the sea. We go westward to escape, and we are delivered unto the house of hollowness, a house of loneliness, a house that is hollow like a cave, but we have a part in it. Verse 5, And the borders of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was this, even the border of their inheritance on the east side was crowns of glory unto the house of hollowness. Yeshua says, follow me and leave all your family behind. If you don't love me more than anything else, you are not worth it. But I will reward you. No matter what you've lost, you will be rewarded 30, 60 and a hundred folds, fold. Crowns of glory, we follow through the house of hollowness. We follow unto the border on the east, crowns of glory. Towards the sea, verse 6, towards the sea to Mikmata, towards the sea to a hiding place for a time, because there is a time to approach Shiloh. There's a time to approach Shiloh from the border of Mikmata unto Ta'anath Shiloh, towards the sea, towards the hiding place, for a time to approach Shiloh, approach peace, Shiloh, Shalom, peace, and pass by it to Yanoha, pass by a time for Shiloh to come, and passing all the way up to Yanoha. Yanoha is Yah rests. Yahuwah himself rests. Isn't this amazing? And here I'm wondering, Father, what is, what is, what is it to, to have a time to approach Shiloh? And I remember you showed me before Genesis 49 verse 10. You've shown all of us that does Bible studies. Genesis 49 verse 10. Genesis is all about the blessings of Jacob unto his 12 sons. And he blessed Judah, the royal tribe. And he said to Judah, The scepter shall not depart ever from Judah, nor will the lawgiver depart from your feet, O Judah. 
This will never happen until Shiloh come. And who is Shiloh? He's the scepter. He's the king. He's the royal law giver that is born from between the feet of Judah. The woman in Revelation who gave birth to David's son, the son of David, the king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach. Until he comes, and when he comes unto him, shall the gathering of the people be. What gathering? Well, we've been scattered according to Deuteronomy 4 verse 26 to 30. Because of our disobedience, because Ephraim is the mixed Egyptian blood with Hebrew. But out of every tribe, nation and tongue, we are called back to return like the prodigal son to the house of God. Our borders, Ephraim's borders, is from the house of Al, Beth Al, to the borders of Luz, the, the staff blossom, the almond tree, and passing along the borders of Arki to Ataroth, passing along the passing a long border, Arki, all the way to Ataroth grounds, and goes down west towards Yaflati, escape, and then be delivered. Yaflati, escape, to be delivered, delivered unto Beth Horon, the house of hollowness, and to Gezer, our part in it, Gezer. But the borders of the children of Israel is this, on the east side, is Ataroth Adar, the border of the east is the crowns of glory, unto Beth Horon, the house of hollowness. And it went up towards the sea to Mikmatite, the hiding place, on the north side, and eastward towards the Anath Shiloh, a time to approach Shiloh. Because we are in this time where Shiloh is approaching. The Antichrist system will set up first. It has to happen so that Shiloh can approach. And he will gather all of us back and give us these borders of our promised inheritance. And then we'll pass by that. We'll go through the thousand years of the millennial reign of the king of priests, the prince of priests, um, the prince of peace. Shiloh prophesied in the beginning, the end, declared from the beginning, Genesis 40, 19. And then Yahuwah will come to rest. Revelation 21. The new Jerusalem with God, Yahuwah himself in it, will descend out of heaven like a bride, a chaste virgin. Look at Joshua 16, verse 7. It went down. From Yah Noha to Ataroth and to Naarath and came to Jericho and went out at Jordan. I'm reading this in the prophetic. To Anoth Shiloh, remember the previous verse, all the way east to Yah Noha, and the borders went down from Yahuwah rests to crowns. To the maiden, the virgin, the servant girl, and came to the going down of the moon, and went out towards to go down, to prostrate yourself, to worship. God is going to come down when Shiloh, when Shiloh's time has approached, God himself will come down, and the crown of life will be given to given to the virgin bride and she her moon will go down you know the the whole moon cycle of death of menstruation will will finish and we will all at jordan jordan means to go down to prostrate yourself jericho means moon jordan means we will pass all that the bride naaraf when, when Shiloh comes and Yahuwah rests with us, then the maiden, female servant, the moon will stop. The cycles of the menstruation of death, blood will stop. And we will have the marriage and we will prostrate ourselves, go down, 
bow before our God. Verse 8, the border went out from Tapua westward unto the river Kana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance. So the border went out from the apple city. You are the apple of my eye. Ay. The border went out from Tapu, Tapua, the apple city, westward unto the river Kana, westward unto r- the reeds, the reeds or the branches, the reeds or the branches that is to be obtained, that is to be um, gathered together. And now I, I don't have a choice. I have to go back to where Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh through their father, Joseph. Genesis 49 verse 22. Because the borders went out from the apple of my eye unto my reeds, my branches, that I will gather back together again. Oh, let me now just find it. Genesis 49 Verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by the well, whose branches run over the wall. In this, um, in the Hebrew, this word for branches is but, and but has to do with a virgin daughter. And we know the wild branches of the olive tree through Joseph, through the house of Joseph, the ten northern tribes, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, scattered into every tribe, nation and tongue, but believing the words of God through Moses again, returning to him again, facing all the giants and the, and the Egyptian and the Babylonian and the Assyrian king who, who took us into exile, facing all of that, facing the walls of Jericho, coming back into the promised land but enduring under the slavery of Pharaoh for now, enduring the wilderness journey and testing for now, learning to obey the Torah so that we are not deceived by the mark of the beast, by the one world government system that will all um, worship the beast and cause everybody to worship the image of the beast. And Satan gives him his his power and his throne of authority and his um, glory and everybody worships the beast and worships um, the devil who gives power unto the beast but those who know their God Daniel 11 will not follow the anti-messiah that is prophesied in Daniel 11 those who Uh, obey the Torah and have the witness of Messiah, Revelation 12, verse 17. Those will endure and have patience unto the end, but they are the ones against whom the dragon will fight, Revelation 14, verse 12. But we understand, Father, that your prophecies to Ephraim in the old, ancient, Old Testament books of Genesis and Joshua is teaching us that through this journey, where you brought us up and out of Egypt and into the promised land. We have to endure all the way to the end. Otherwise, we will not make it. We will lose our faith along the way. But you give us all the information we need. From the house of Yahuwah to the almond tree, passing the long borders all the way to crowns, going westward to escape and be delivered unto the house of hollowness, where we have a part in, border on east, on the crowns of glory, unto the house of hollowness, toward the sea, to a hiding place for a time, to approach Shiloh, peace, and pass by it to the time where you are going to rest, Yahuwah rest. We go down, we understand that Yahuwah rests, and it goes down, from Yahuwah rests two crowns to the maiden servant, to the time of the moon going down, and we prostrating ourselves before you, from the apple city all the way to branches. This is the inheritance of the tribes of Ephraim.